So we'll start with the paints we're going to use. These are ordinary thinner acrylics, the standard acrylics, and although they don't look any different, these are the heavy body acrylics. They're much thicker, pastier, and more intense in colour. I've just put a coat of red and yellow ordinary acrylics over onto a piece of paper. Right, let's look at the basis of acrylics. I'm going to use two brushes for this. One a fill book, which is a flat rounded end one. It's nice for doing blending, and a flat as well. And we'll look at blending as well. First thing we want to look at is the transparency of the acrylics. They aren't as transparent as watercolours, but they are more transparent than oil paints. So if we use some colours thinly, they'll be a, a, we can work them as a glaze. Let's just take the yellow we just used. In fact, I'll use a lemon yellow here. Mix it up on the side, a little bit of water, and you can see how thin it is there. Now there's some black here. If I paint it over the black, look how thin it actually is. And this is the trouble with the cheaper acrylics. They tend to be very thin, and look, it's barely covering that. If I put it very, very thickly, then we can start to do it by using the paint more thickly and opaquely. But even then it can dry um, to almost transparently. So it's great for doing thinner paintings and building up but we do need the heavier body acrylics. Now I'm going to take some heavy body acrylic and put that across here and use it quite thickly and even that one in the yellow isn't that brilliant. Do it again with a, with a darker colour. So we've got to lay it quite thickly to make it work. Even if I use the cheaper one thickly it still doesn't really do the job. So it goes on very, very jelly-like, it hardly goes on the wet paint at all. It's a mess. So cheap acrylics they're all right, but you don't get this brightness and heavy body that we need. Now, because it's thin, we can use this as a glaze. So if I take the same paint, I'm going to take some of the same body, water it down a bit. This is, this is a slightly heavier body. And to make colours, we mix them together. And I've already discussed the primary colour, the secondary colours and the tertiary colours. If I take this yellow and go over the red, we should get an orange. So we can do this by glazing, by doing it thinner or lighter. I'm using the filbert brush in this case, so I can just tickle it in with my, the end of my brush. And I can make this heavier or lighter by adding more pigment across the whole thing, as you see here. A little bit more paint, I can completely cover it, and I can graduate my way down just by tickling it across the surface and using a little bit of water. So there's mixing colour that way. We've also got broken colour. Now this paper is slightly rough. So if I drag, and we've got a brush mark there already from the, from the red, if I drag my brush across look we get a rough effect of broken colour, which is very effective. If I come into that we can have broken colour by dots. So I can actually come in here, I can use a round brush and make lots of little tiny dots. I'm going to cross hatch here with the dots. And if I make this effect from a distance we'll get the effect of orange. And this is cross hatching then, the little lines cross hatching the dots. So we get the broken colour like that, and I can make broken, broken colour by making little round dots as well. So I get a little round brush, using a little round brush to deliberately make red and yellow dots on the paper to give the effect of broken colour, just like I was doing in my sea scenes. From a distance it will start to look orange. It's white showing through. We could totally cover it, so I'm going to make it darker in some places and lighter in others by putting the dots closer together in some and further apart in others. Take some, some, some red and start to put that bit of red into there. Mix it here so I can mix it together to make orange like that. If I take the red, I can put those dots in between and from a distance we'll start to get the effect of red. And also I can actually blend the wet paint into the wet paint so I'm putting red into the yellow. So over here, for instance, I can make orange by adding red to yellow. With all of these different ways of working. So there we are, we can mix colour by glazing, we can mix colour by mixing the two together, we can mix colour by using textures, and uh, that, that's, the, that's the glazing method, that's the blending method as well. Um, we can blend two together too, if I take this red, put it down there like that, or I take some clean yellow, put it down here like this, you can blend that colour together with that one while they're still soft, just by tickling them together like that. Now you don't need lots of water for this, but the thing with acrylics is that you have got to work quickly. Now talking of working quickly and having a gloss paint, 
Most of these paints will dry opaque. You can add glazing mediums and you can also add various acrylic mediums to make them flow, to be able to pour them, to make them blend more easily, blending mediums and all sorts. All I'm going to do today is show you water, but I'm also going to show you how to put PVA glue with them as well, a little bit of filler with them, because we can make textures and can go over textures as well. Textures I can show you later, but we'll just deal with this at the moment. So we're talking about blending just now. If I take my, deliberately take some of my black and add some white to it, and I put that over here, you can see how it's fairly transparent. It will just let that show through here. So I'm going to make that a little bit stronger. I'm not using heavy body colour at the moment. I'm just using ordinary acrylic colour. And I'm going to bring that out, right out to here. You can see I can just blend that in. If I want to blend that in more softly, I'm going to take a flat brush now. I can use a little bit of water and I can blend that through and into here by lifting it in. It tends to lift the colour off as well, so you have to be careful. And I can use that, so depending how much water. Now we're going to add a little bit of uh, PVA to this in a moment to paint and see what that does as well. Now if I want to blend over that while that's still wet, let's take a little bit of that black going to the centre here, make a black area, clean my brush off, keep the brush dry. Keep the brush dry, just, just damp from the paint, and we can gradually blend by just tickling with the end of the brush. We can gradually blend it round on the edge, just, just by tickling in. It's very strong at the moment. So we can carefully just look, blend that in round and round and round and round, bringing it outwards while it's still wet. Once that dries, it's much more difficult and we're having to glaze it or put more coats of paint on and build up over the top. So we can do that that way or we can feather it in. We can just do little tiny touches as well. So there's blending it in. We'll go to the opposite. We'll take a little bit of white. And I'm going to use some heavy body white this time. And look how strongly that goes into the middle. It's quite strong. It's quite thick. So I'm going to put some of that quite thickly into the middle of the black while it's still wet. Dry my brush down and I can just blend that also using the feathering technique around the edges to bring a light grey back again. Just tickling the brush on. This is why you don't want too soft a brush or too heavy a brush. Having exactly the right brush is very, very important. A little bit more white just in the middle there to brighten things up. And there we are. You can see how we can gradually work that out. So we can have blending mediums and glazing mediums as well. But this is just your basics. So any colour can be used as a glaze. If I take my cerulean blue, I can come across here, I use it thickly here, and I can gradually thin it down. And I'm not going to use much water for this this time, I'm just going to thin it out by really just dragging the paint out with a damp brush. And you see how we can make that come across and it glazes across. Not easy because it tends to lift off the, the paint. But there we go, we can see a sort of green tint coming there as that comes through. It's not going to give us as clean a brighter colour as actually making the colour or using even broken colour. So we've got broken colour, broken colour, textural broken colour, glazing, glazing and blending of the colours together. Now that's painting wet over dry paint. Let's deliberately take some of that same colour, the yellow. This time I'm going to take some heavy body yellow Put that onto here. I'm going to put a, a light yellow and a deeper chrome yellow on deliberately. Now we can drag paint wet into wet. So I'll clean my brush off. I'm going to take the red again. Take some heavy body red this time. And if I put that red over here, it's a little bit wet yet. A little bit dry up. I don't want my brush to make the heavy body wet. If I put that over here and drag it into the wet paint, you can see I can start to blend it in, to feather it in, until it just gently blends down and takes over the brush. So here it's solid on the yellow, and then we come into the yellow, on the dry yellow, picking it up now, come into the wet yellow and it starts to blend in, and I can actually blend it right down and in and get these lovely effects. And I can take them in any directions I want, I can crisscross it, to make a broken colour effect again. So now I've got one colour showing through another. 
to give broken colour again. So we can blend it in all together and just make the orange with the two. We can even drag it through into lines. We can make grasses and all sorts. So wet on dry and wet into wet. Wet next to wet was blending there. We've got texture of course and the heavier we add the paint the more texture we get. And then we can add paint across that texture which we'll show with some of the examples of the textured paintings I've done. So there we have also the difference between the heavy bodies as well. If I take a thin white body, again to show you on here, across the black, it doesn't cover at all, look. If I take the heavier white body, it should cover much better, and there's the difference again, straight away you can see it. So even then it's a little bit slimy, you might need a couple of coats. So we want bright colours. We know then how to get them. We've got to keep the colours pure and clean. We have to choose our colours carefully and make sure the colours work well one to another. We have to work the opposites in the colour circles, greens to reds, purples to yellows and so on to make this really work. As an example of that, let's just take some of my purple and I'm going to put a little bit of this purple smack into the middle of the yellow and look how brilliantly that shines out. Let's just take some of my green and put some of the green into the middle of the red and look how that shines out against the, the green. Opposites in the colour circle will do that. So we've got lights and darks, we've got cools and warms, and we've got textures, and we've got the opposites in the colour circles to work for us. That's how we're going to get nice, clean, bright colours. Those are just ordinary colours. Let's just take a fluorescent colour and look at the difference. It's a nice bright day, so we're going to see the difference now in the fluorescent colour compared to this um, red here. Just look how bright that is. So if I wanted to show, um, using ordinary colours as bright as I can, if I wanted to show uh, something fluorescent, like somebody wearing a bright fluorescent coat in this, then we've got a couple of fluorescent colours there, look, pink and the orange, to give you an idea of how they stand out. But we can make things look fluorescent simply by the fact that they're an opposite in the colour circle. Or that, um, as Constable did, as I showed you earlier, by having a green landscape and a little bit of red in it. So by using light and darks against each other, or by using cools and warms or the opposites, we can make something look fluorescent without painting fluorescent paint in. How dull these look compared to that. But if we got rid of that altogether, so I'm going to take some, some black now and just paint it out. Just dull it down, then the other colours start coming back to being bright again. So if I take some cadmium orange now and a little bit of white, that won't be fluorescent, but if I put it on that dark, it will look quite light. So I'm making some cadmium orange, a little bit of white, put that onto here, and it looks almost as fluorescent as that colour did earlier, because it's against a dark. Again, take a lighter yellow, some of that into it and again it goes lighter still. If we were to photograph that in black and white that probably would look the same tone as this or in fact even darker. Though it's brighter in colour intensity this is a brighter colour intensity colour than, 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 the, than this one or this one it is in fact tonally uh, darker. Take a little bit of PVA glue, just pour a wee bit into a pot, don't need much of it, just to give you an idea, a little bit there, look, just trickling in, that's all I need, it's gone back in again, that's it. And I just want to show you, now PVA glue will dry transparent, and it'll also dry shiny, so although you can add a gloss medium to your acrylic paint, you can um, make if you're doing show working with paper tissue and so on, you could use the PVA glue to give it a glaze or as a glue and it will dry transparent and the tissue will actually be transparent at the end. If I take now some of my, um, what shall I take? I'll take a bit of uh, heavy body ultramarine blue and I'm going to deliberately mix it over here with some PVA. And when this is dry, you can see how now it's building up quite a heavy body. It's very thick and gungy and gluey. 
So we've got a lovely thick body using the glue, put more in it. It's going to be a bit transparent, but we can really build it up. And we could pour this, add a bit of water, and it can be poured like a pouring medium. And look how thick it's giving me a lovely body. And because it's a heavy bodied paint, it's, when it's unthickly, it's not gone totally transparent, which means that I can paint it over any of this. Let's have a look and see. Look how thick that's going on, giving me a lovely texture. I could even build the texture up by stippling. You can see it lifting up there. So we could do that with a heavy body anyway, but using a little bit of PVA paint there gives us that advantage in taking it a stage further. We can experiment with PVA glue and even use it as a glaze. So let's take a closer look at these objects. So now you see how I've stiffled that up, how the texturing of the other um, paintings that we've just done how the texturing of the other paintwork looks close up, where we've mixed it, where we blended wet into wet, where we glazed over using different thicknesses of heavy body paint and ordinary paint, where I've glazed one colour over another up here, how we've glazed the yellow over the white, yellow over the red there, again the, the stippling texture here and cross hatching right across to how the different whites go on, the heavy body goes on onto the black and the glazing, how we've also blended out there with the, with the brush to blend out. Blending out can also be done even with your finger. If I use my finger there, look, I can just gently blend that in while it's still damp. So I'm going to take a little bit of the white paint and just blend in with my finger, putting some blue in there as well. And I can use my finger to softly rub that in, something people often forget. A little bit of water on my finger and I can just blend that round and in ever so softly much more smoother than I can with a brush. Why does everything have to be done with a brush? And having said that, you can then move on to sponges and rollers. So I can come in there and I can blend it around with my finger making effects. I can get it as smooth as I like or I can even start to make cloud effects. So not just brushes, you can use other tools as well. So earlier on I showed you some of the PVA medium mixed with the paint. If we mix a little bit of water with that as well, I've made a bit of blue and purple together here. We can start it to, to pour it as a medium as well. We can pour this across things. And I'm sure that by using syringes and so on, we could equally use that. Um, put a bit more on here because I'm going to use the roller. Um, we could use that <coughs> in more detail and depth. Sponge rollers are also another wonderful um, tool to play with. You see entire paintings done with this. We can use the sponge rollers to get wonderful effects and they will actually glaze almost across things or we can use them very heavily with the paint. So sponge rollers which you can use them to draw with too because you can actually make quite a thin line with the roller look. So use of roller too and then we've got sponges where we take an actual sea sponge and we can take the sponge and we can use that sponge to make texturing as well, like this. So we can bring texturing up. And this could be broken colour or it could be just lights and darks as in a beach. So there's a load of ways to use acrylics and still keeping bright clean colours. You've got to mix clean colours and some colours will make muddier colours than others. This is something I need to learn. Mm -hmm.